you didn't sign my petition last Sunday. You too busy talking with John Dixon. Don't worry, I've got it here. Hello, hi, hello. <laughs> so Come on. Seamlessly. Did you get any contribution into it? I know you were quite straight as you because you've done some work on it. No, no, no. Oh, that's the goal. I was a bit. In the wind. In the wind. It's blowing in the wind. Gentlemen, hello. Governments and business will do frack all. It's up to us to save us. Actually, no, they will do, as uh, VM West was saying, they're not actually um, doing nothing. They're getting ready for it. They want they want a culling. As they want actually, they're, they're getting ready for only one billion people in the, on the planet. And of course, the billionaires are buying up land in New Zealand. They're making their own bunkers, their own underground what cities. My, my poster isn't good enough. No, I'd, say, I, I'd say it's actually, actually it, is, it is correct. So, what are you doing here today? Well, hold on. I'm, okay. here, I'm here on behalf of TTIP. Yep. <laughs> and if TTIP goes through, the legislation will make it almost impossible to effectively tackle some climate change. So, TTIP is, uh, is the first hurdle that we need to get out of the way before we can really tackle climate change. That's correct. I mean, like, uh, uh, well, Petitions. There's a petition people on the on the on the government website, but uh, it's only about forty. For, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so about forty thousand people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Forty thousand people have signed it. We need another sixty thousand. Then afterwards, actually, they'll probably discuss it in a small chamber, as small as possible, so they can ignore it. The whole reason it's going through, or it has gone through so far, is because so few people know about it. So if there's a referendum, everything we do to bring it to the surface helps us to stop it. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I was just uh, on my way here, I spoke to a couple of young people, one's 24, the other's 22, one is uh, going to be in 47,000 47, pounds in debt, another one is, I can't even remember, something like the same, 45 to 50,000. Uh, what are the chances that actually, uh, once TTIP goes through, they're going to end up becoming uh, corporate slaves? And also, if they're in debt, they're not going to cause too much trouble to the state, are they? They're going to be too busy like keeping their heads down and paying off their debts. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's going to be uh, under the radar, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that is actually the case. I mean, that they're here, they're in, uh, but at some point they're going to be. Uh, once actually uh, started environmental engineering, I'm thinking. So who are, you, who are you going to end up uh, working for? Anyway, we shall see. BP. <laughs> ah, yeah, unfortunately. Anyway, sir, what do you think? So, what are you doing here? I'm just standing around waiting for some T-tip flyers <laughs> to hand out to. Um, people that walk past the TTIP block here. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm hoping that we actually can get the uh, TTIP uh, out there. It's like that uh, woman from the uh, No Third Runway demonstration saying, oh yes, I consider myself well informed because I, the, I buy the Times newspaper every day. And then we told them maybe we should buy the Morning Star instead. At least they mentioned TTIP. If she bought the TTIP Times that comes out maybe like once every year or something like that, she'd probably learn more than... Than, yeah, the, the Times. Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of TTIP, uh, 
yeah, yeah, you know about that petition. Yeah, the you? petition. So there's a bit of a debate going on here. I was talking to uh, uh, online, talking to some of the NGOs. Mm-hmm. So War on Want and Global Justice Now. Yep. Uh, and this petition, I guess they didn't know about it or they didn't set it up. Mm-hmm. But it, it's been set up since August. And so there's a petition on the Parliament website that says uh, once you get 100,000, then you have a debate. You potentially have a debate for a referendum on TTIP. Mm-hmm. So what I don't understand is why the big NGOs and unions who are running this no TTIP campaign, why they're not telling their people to sign it. Yeah, I mean, in some cases, I, I can understand why people get annoyed by petitions. And but then it's also quite useful in its own way. We can actually uh, get this it. Is I mean, a government one, though. This is yeah, it's a government one. one, yes. If you get 100,000 people saying, I am concerned, I would like a debate on TTIP, mm-hmm. then then you have, you can say people asked for it and then we refused it or yes. we did it. Yes. So I don't understand why people uh, at the top of those organizations, like mm. for example, who was I, I got an email yesterday from Guy Taylor, who's uh, the TTIP officer for Global Justice Now, basically just said, we're not going to back it. Uh, we're not going to tell our supporters about this. They won't even pass the information on. I don't know if that's true, but you know, because it might have just been a misunderstanding. Yeah, I mean, but, it's, uh, it's, it is an easy, easy thing to do. It's actually, it's, it'll take you, it took me what, about 30 seconds, a minute to do it. And share with your crew. And you know. share with your crew. It's like, uh, I mean, I know that uh, people keep saying, who cares about petitions? Correct. But at the same time, it does get the word out. It's the only and one I've ever signed. I mean, it's the only ever digital one I've ever signed. Okay. So sorry, anyone who's ever sent me one before. It's the only one I ever signed just because I thought it was an official one. Mm. I didn't create it, but yes, because there's two months left. It's being signed at, I think, about 2,000 a week at the moment, mm-hmm. which means we're definitely going to fail. Yes. So all it needs is a couple of people with a bit of a following and that people respect to just go, you do realise that yeah. this, this is part of the debate. Because with the EU referendum, Cameron's given four conditions. Condition number two is deregulation and competition. And so everyone thinks that's the one that's just going to sail through. Brussels is just going to say, yeah, no problem with that one. Yeah. So we're there saying, actually, the deregulation agenda needs to be questioned. Yes. Because it doesn't get questioned in any election. Yeah. And obviously, McDonnell and um, Corbyn are surrounded by... Uh, Blairites. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's maybe one or two other people who aren't. But, you know. So, for example, Seema Malhotra, McDonald's number two. She's a great speaker, but um, I think she's very heavily pro TTIP you know, treasury and financial services. So, you know, it's so divided on certain yeah. topics. I signed it and then my uh, MP is actually David Lammy. I tried to send him an email as well. He hasn't read his email. It's actually, uh, uh, oh, I'm not sure. It's like his email is full yeah. and he can't even, he can't accept any more emails. You know what? The other day I went to this hackathon at Parliament and they were designing something. They wanted to design something. So this is like geeks and civil servants. Okay. They wanted to design something to help s- MPs manage their emails and in the end they didn't have to because someone's already done it. Uh, I think it's called Caseworker. Okay. So maybe we could call up David Lammy and say maybe you need to use Caseworker. It might they, be. They charge like 500 quid a year and then afterwards your email is more manageable. Uh, yeah, I know. It's like uh, somebody just uh, missed this ask because they can't manage them themselves. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> If you can't manage your inbox, what are you going to do with the economy? I know, it's like a David Lammy. I I presume, how many emails does he get? A few hundred a day, maybe? Yeah. I mean, like, I remember a secretary for uh, for a general manager for a hotel. She says she gets 200 emails a day. She has to read each and every one of them. I mean, like, uh, yeah, exactly. But then, yeah, so that would mean if you have a a secretary, a personal assistant, they should be able to read 200 emails a day. It's actually, it's easy enough. I'll tell you another good one. Sadiq Khan, yeah? So, given that he's now chosen... Oh, by the way, you're running for a councillor. I don't know. No. Actually, I uh, I got 45 votes. All right. Anyway, guys, I was running for the. Uh, I want to run for the Green Party, Barnet and Camden. Uh, so the other guy actually got uh, 48 votes, and I only got 45. So uh, oh, he won by three. It would have been great to actually um, to get out there and uh, do some oh, radical yeah. stuff. But uh, yeah, well, perhaps next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, de- next time, tell me, man, and I'll try and see. Because I mean, definitely, there's brethren in Camden. <laughs> just show up and just be like, oh, he's the man. I mean, people who probably watch your streams. You've probably got more than 45 people dependent on your streams in Camden already. Okay, that's all I'm um, good then. Uh, nothing wrong with pulling these in. So yes, yeah, so Sadiq Khan, basically, so on the, the 4th of December, there's going to be a devolution for London uh, kind of bill being read in Parliament. So I wanted to ask Sadiq Khan, uh, when London gets devolved and becomes an independent city, uh, then 
will the mayor have 100% control over the health budget or should some of the responsibilities be retained by the, social, the Secretary of State for health, social services, DWP or local government? And so how much should it be? If the mayor is responsible for everything, then what other responsibilities does that mean that they have, you know? Okay. And could they have, like, quite political selection of who gets to see their MP, basically, in terms of the funding? Yeah. So, yeah, they're not very good at managing their mail, because I emailed them maybe three or four weeks ago, uh -huh. and I've reminded them a few times, and they haven't got back yet. Um, Come on, they have... They have neighbor. Uh, neighbor. I know, but they have, they have... Okay, they get... They've got a lot of people working for them. Exactly, but. they have uh, 70,000 a year, plus they have uh, money for uh, for the office. I'm thinking, yeah. come on. I think it might be getting a bit closer. The Tories were very honest. They just said, you know, they said, fuck off, we're not going to answer anything, you know. <laughs> um, and the Greens, they gave me an answer. And Lib Dems gave me an answer. Lib Dems was very Osborne. Uh -huh. Like that, you know, let's just do this. Okay. Um, and the Greens were half good, half but, you know, imagine how many lobbyists are there trying to get them. No, no, there's you know, a case. Trying to buy their um, interests. Darren Johnson of the Greens, he's on the devolution committee for London. Mm -hmm. so I haven't read that yet, but I'm sure he's going to be doing some yeah. good stuff. Well, I know, like, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a few people who are against um, plug it. Europe. Plug it. Yes, plug it. What is it? Climate justice means trade justice. Yeah, so this is um, uh, Stop TTIP's new flyers for the climate march. Climate justice means trade justice. TTIP, box of tricks for corporate climate criminals. This is really good. I'm well impressed. It's better than the um, yeah, it's better than the, all, the other all, one. All previous flyers put together. Okay, tra dirty trade deals like the Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership lie at the heart of climate change, yeah. which is correct. Remember this, people. Uh, the corporations and the governments are getting ready for a culling. They want this, like it's um, the American Navy. Okay, the U.S. Navy are getting ready for climate change. You don't believe climate change happens? Fine. But put it this way, the American Navy, U.S. Navy, is getting ready for climate change. Why? Because they want to, by 2030, they want to run on solar energy completely, okay? 2030, they want to run by, uh, with solar, solar, solar power only. So consider that when you say that there's no such a climate change. You're going to have to be ready for this. Okay, guys, I'll, uh, I shall please uh, tweet this out and everything else and follow, who do we follow anyway? Oh yes, no ttip.org.uk and uh, stop ttip.net. I shall do that. Anyway, guys, peace out and uh, yeah, keep sharing. Thank you.